Okay, so hello my dear students, so welcome to um, another discussion for accounting for derivatives and hedging for in currency transaction. So in this video, we shall be discussing um, one of the hedge item now, which is the highly probable forecasted transaction. Okay, so um, what is a forecasted transaction and how does it differ from a firm commitment? Okay, so a forecasted transaction is an anticipated future transaction okay, for which no firm commitment exists or it's uncommitted, no, uh, but anticipated transaction. Okay, so uh, ano pinagkaiba ng forecasted transaction at saka firm commitment? No? So in a firm commitment kasi diba, um, may binding agreement na, no? no? May, may binding agreement, no? with the buyer no or seller no if it's a firm commitment to purchase or a firm commitment to sell okay so uh, but a for in a forecasted transaction mag iniisip pa lang ng company no na mag purchase ng goods or uh, or to sell goods no so there is no commitment to a specific price no um Kasi nga, iniisip pa lang nga ng company or it does not entails rights or obligations. So, unlike with firm commitment, ba na um, committed na, no, ang both parties, no, na to enter into a contract, no. Sa forecast transaction nga kasi, ang, ang entity pa lang ang nakaalam, no, kasi nag-anticipate pa lang siya na mag-purchase or mag-sell ng goods, okay? So, examples uh, of a forecast or transaction or anticipate, anticipated sales transaction or anticipated inventory purchase, okay? So, a forecasted uh, transaction no, uh, may subsequently, uh, subsequently result to a recognition of either a financial asset or liabilities, for example, or equity investments or loan or um, a non-financial asset or liability, you know, um, examples, um, forecasted transaction to purchase inventory or property plant and equipment. So, okay, a, for, um, a forecasted transaction qualifies for a cash flow hedge, okay? So, um, kasi nga, di ba, an entity is exposed, no? Um, an entity to a cash flow risk, no? That will affect reported other comprehensive income. So, um, remember that ang difference lang na fair value hedge in a cash flow hedge is that sa fair value hedge, um, ang changes ng fair value, no? Uh, si sa derivative will be taken into profit or loss. However, uh, in a cash flow hedge, di ba, um, changes in the value of the underlying nor the derivative shall be taken into other comprehensive income. Okay, so sa firm commitment, di ba, no, um, a fair value exposure because um of my commitment ka to a specific price. No? So, if the price changes by the time the transaction takes place, there is either a gain or loss on the fair value of the commitment. No? So, yun siya yun yung risk ng uh, uh, fair value, no? ang risk sa fair, firm commitment. Okay? So, a forecasted transaction does not involve such an exposure. No? Kasi nga, di ba? Uh, so, I've said kanina, um, there is an absence of a commitment no, to a specific date. No? So, kasi nga, di ba, wala pang, uh, walang um, obligation or right no, ang forecasted transaction. However, no, a forecasted transaction still has a cash flow exposure that stems from changes in the price no, of the forecasted item. No? So, depending on the price eventually received or paid no, 
So the amount of cash flow of the related revenue or purchase may differ when the transaction um, is first forecasted. So yun nga, um, if the entity is still exposed to cash flow risk. And then, um, changes no, of the value of the underlying yun nga, will be taken into the other comprehensive income. Okay? So, ano yung treatment natin, no? Um, with the um, gains or loss na, na take natin into other comprehensive income. So, magdepende yung uh, treatment natin sa gains or loss na nasa other comprehensive income if um, the forecasted transaction results to either financial asset or liability or non-financial asset or liability. So, if the forecasted transaction results into a financial asset or liability, uh, other comprehensive income gain or losses will be reclassified to P&L in the same period or periods which the hedge item affect profit or loss. Okay? Or, if the forecasted transaction result into a non-financial asset or liability, no, so may dalawa tayong options. Okay, either um, other comprehensive income gain or loss will be reclassified to PNL, no, in the same period or periods which the hedge item affect PNL. Okay, so say for example, if nag forecast ka, no, to purchase inventory, okay, so yung other comprehensive uh, other comprehensive gain uh, gain or loss will be reclassified to PNL, no? Pag um mabenta na yung goods kasi that's the time na yung uh, value ng goods or ng cost, no, uh, will be taken into profit or loss, di ba? Pag mabenta na siya. Or um um the uh, the other alternative is to Yung other comments of gain or loss will be close to the initial carrying amount of the hedge item. Okay? Okay, so we have here some illustrations no, in um, hedge if a forecasted transaction. Okay? So we have here our first illustration. No? On December 1, 2014, Dominador Company expects to purchase a machine for 1,000 US dollars. Okay? Um, in the United States uh, on March 1, 2015. Okay? So the transaction is probable, but there is no binding agreement. Okay? So it's highly probable, but no binding agreement. So, um, since what's well, binding agreement is a forecasted transaction lang, not a firm commitment, and is to be dominated in dollars. So, the transaction and settlement for the purchase of the machine is March 1, 2015. Also, to hedge this forecasted transaction, um, the Dominator company entered into a third forward contract to purchase 1,000 US dollars on March 1, 2015 for 40.15, okay, the 90-day forward rate. Okay, the Minador company designates the forward contract as a hedging instrument in a cash flow hedge of the exposure to increase in the dollar rate. Okay, so let's have the entry for the hedge item no? and the hedge uh, instrument. Okay, so for the hedge instrument, diba, we have a um, forward contract to buy. Uh, foreign currency. So therefore, we have uh, foreign currency receivable from exchange dealer, credit peso payable to exchange dealer at a forward rate no? um, of 40.15 on December 1. That's a 90-day forward rate. So diba? 90-day forward rate since um, 90 days no? um, yung settlement. Okay? Diba? So, uh, Diba pag, ano, for uh, forward contract to buy foreign currency, um, fix yung payable mo, pero mag-vary yung receivable depende sa spot rate at the date of settlement. Okay? So, you have here, uh, debit foreign currency receivable for exchange dealer, credit peso payable to exchange dealer for 40150 Again, since 
this is still an anticipated future transaction or a highly probable uh, forecasted transaction na wala pang transaction uh, so therefore walang entry for the hedge item okay so on december 31 2014 so uh, the value of the derivative contract diba magdepende sa uh, price ng underlying and ang underlying here is the number of foreign currency so magdepende siya sa value or exchange rate diba okay so we are we are to consider the changes in the exchange rates particularly the forward rate no so we have here um since 60 day man ang uh, 60 day pa man remaining to settlement so we have to consider the 60 day forward rate versus the 90 day forward rate in december 1 okay so we have uh, 40.4 less 40.15 times 1000 so since yung hedge instrument natin is a receivable diba? so therefore uh, pag mag increase that means gain okay so we have here 40.4 less 40.50 times 1,000, that's actually 250, okay? Since this is a cash flow hedge, changes in the value or changes in the value of the underlying will be taken into the profit uh, in the other comprehensive income, okay? Exchange gain will uh, presented in the balance sheet, okay? It's other comprehensive income, okay, for 250, okay? Yeah. Again, there's no entry on the hedge item until um, di pa nag um, uh, takes place, uh, di pa nag take place yung transaction. Okay? So, on March 1, 2015, no, um, this is actually the day, no, uh, yung settlement date, no, or delivery date, or the settlement date, no, of the machine and also the forward contract or the derivative okay so but we'll take it to consideration muna the changes in the rate no so diba we have used 60 day forward rate on december 31 and then for march 1 we'll, uh, the settlement date will use then the forward rate at the spot rate so we have 40.4 that's 40.2 so nagbaba siya and this is receivable so um with uh, my loss so pag my loss will debit it to other comprehensive income okay change gain or loss diba oh, that's that's exchange gain or loss yeah okay so for 200 credit for currency receivable from exchange dealer at 200 pesos okay it's still no entry for your hedge item no? yeah. okay so since this is a settlement date no um you'll debit peso payable credit cash no? for the payment of the uh uh, for your fixed payment diba? uh, to the exchange dealer at 40,150 yan and also um, the receipt no, of the foreign currency no kasi you uh, receive foreign currency based on the forward rate diba uh, this spot rate this spot rate uh, on the settlement date which is 40 point Two, so you'll debit investment in foreign currency credit foreign currency receivable from exchange dealer at its balance of 40,200 no again will equal the interest spot rate at the settlement date and of course debit cash credit investment in foreign currency for 40,200 also on March 1 okay you'll record na uh, the purchase of the machine at spot okay so you'll debit machinery credit cash for 40,000 200 okay and so um diba if a forecasted transaction results into a non-financial asset or liability diba result into non-financial asset or liability um there are we have two options so either uh either we adjust it to the fair initial carrying amount 
of the hedge item which is yung machinery or um, your classify natin siya to PNL na to PNL um, in subsequent periods no, when the hedge item affect profit or loss. So, since this is a machinery, no, so, yung, uh, yung, ano, yung other comprehensive income no, will remain in the other comprehensive income and be released from other comprehensive income as the machine is depreciated or otherwise affects profit or loss. So, pwede mo rin amortize yung other comprehensive income or pwede siya be deducted or added from the initial carrying amount of the machine. So, uh, for illustration purposes, uh, we shall consider na lang the second option or alternative which is to adjust it to the carrying amount of our hedge item. Okay? Since we have um, the value for our other comprehensive income, no? And so, di ba, we've uh, credited other comprehensive at 250 and then we've debited also other comprehensive income for 200. Okay, so may balance tayo na um, 50 na credit for the other comprehensive income in our loss. So, since credit siya, so, i-debit natin siya para ma-eliminate. Okay, so, debit OCI exchange gain or loss na 50. Credit ka ng machine at uh, 50 pesos. Okay. So, din siya, uh, na-adjust yung carrying amount ng machine natin to how much? 40,200 less 50. So, the, therefore, the cost of the machine now is 40,150. Okay, so we have here um, other illustration. No? Um, on December 1, 2019, so perfect company anticipated the purchase of 85,000 units of merchandise from a vendor. Okay, so the purchase would probably occur on March 1, 2020 and require the payment of 1,250,000 foreign currencies. Okay, so on the same date, to hedge this forecasted uh, purchase transaction, uh, Perfect Company entered into a 90-day forward contract to purchase uh, 1,250,000 foreign currency. Okay. On, of course, March 1, 2020. So, the exchange rates and various dates, so ito yung uh, ano natin, the exchange rates, the spot rates, and forward rates on December 1, December 31, and March 1. Okay. So, the 85,000 units of merchandise was delivered on March 1, 2020. And the merchandise was sold on the following dates. Okay. So, we have on April 1, it had sold 30%. 30% uh, of the goods and on June 1, it sold 70% or the remaining 70% of the goods, okay? So, this is still a forecasted transaction, no, to purchase, but uh, yung purchase natin is inventory because the previous illustration, yung purchase is a machinery, okay? So, on December 1, okay? So, since walang entry for the hedge item, kasi nga wala pang transaction, no? So, it's only a forecasted transaction lang. Okay, so, uh, yung entry natin will be on the hedge instrument lang uh, to record the um, forward contract to buy 1,250,000 foreign currency. So, again, pag forward contract to buy, fix yung payable, magbari yung receivable. Okay, so, we'll debit foreign currency receivable from exchange dealer, credit, peso payable to exchange dealer, uh, by 531,250 is actually 1,250,000 times 0.425, the 90-day forward rate, okay? So, on December 31, on December 31, no? So, we'll take into consideration the changes in the forward rates, okay? Kasi, uh, yung relevant rate lang naman natin is um, forward rate since wala pang hedge high temp, no? Okay, so we have 90 day forward rate and 60 day forward rate. No? Kasi 60 days in your remaining. So you have 0.44 less 0.425 times uh, 1,250,000. So you take note that it's a gain. 
kasi nag-increase, di ba, yung exchange rate. And we have receivables, it's again. So, the gain is 18,750 and of course, it shall be uh, taken into the other comprehensive income, GL debit, foreign currency receivable from exchange dealer, credit, other comprehensive income, exchange gain, or loss. Okay, yan. Again, no entry for the hedge item. Okay. On March 1, the settlement date or the delivery date, diba? So, the delivery na yung goods. So, but for una, we'll take consider muna the changes in the uh, rates. So, basta settlement date na, so, i-compare natin is yung uh, uh, previous forward date na gamit natin, which is 4.44 versus the spot rate. Okay, so, take note, nagbaba siya. So, we expect to have a loss kasi nga receivable yung derivative natin or for uh, yung forward contract receivable so 0.44 less 0.42 yun siya less times na uh, 1,250,000 sa actually 825,000 no? na loss kasi nagbaba so pag loss you'll debit it to other comprehensive income exchange gain or loss credit for currency receivable from exchange dealer also, since ito yung settlement date ng forward contract natin, so we'll pay na um, the fixed payable, which is 531250 And of course, you'll receive na um, uh, based on uh, the fair, uh, the spot rate on the settlement date, which is 0.42. So debit investment in foreign currency for 525000 no, So uh, credit uh, foreign currency receivable for exchange dealer and then credit cash, credit investment in foreign currency for 525000 Okay? So, on hedge, on the hedge item also, no? Um, since my transaction na, kasi na-deliver na yung goods, you'll debit it to um, inventory, credit cash for um, the at spot rate, at spot rate on March 1, di ba? And which is uh, which is 0.42. So we have here one million two hundred fifty thousand times 0.42. Okay, that's actually five hundred twenty-five thousand. So the initial carrying amount of our inventory is five hundred twenty-five thousand. Then, the balance of uh, other comprehensive income. Natin. So take note, we've um, we've debited. Uh, we've credited 18750 and we've debited 25000 uh, so we have a loss we have a loss of uh, 6 or my debit balance yung other comprehensive income natin at 6250 so again diba we have two alternatives no two alternatives for this so it's either we adjust it to the carrying amount of the inventory no or um, I will classify natin siya to profit or loss the moment the hedge item affects the profit or loss or the moment when the entity had actually sold the goods or the merchandise. Okay, so so we have here, no? Uh, we have alternative 1 and alternative 2. So, assuming an alternative 1 to yung um, the um, OCI exchange gain or losses or other comprehensive income exchange gain or losses will be adjusted to the initial carrying amount of our hedge item and alternative to uh, we have here the other comprehensive income will be reclassified to profit or loss the moment the hedge item affect the profit or loss okay so i uh, will discuss mo the alternative one okay so ito yung entry natin diba on march one uh the moment na uh, na deliver na yung uh, merchandise no so that's Debit inventory, credit to cash, equal to the spot rate on March 1, which is 0.42. So, we'll debit inventory, credit cash for 525000 Okay? So, um, also, on the, uh, March 1, kasi nga yung uh, alternative natin is to close the other comprehensive income to the initial carrying amount of the inventory. So, and then the balance of the other comprehensive income, the value is 6,250 the debit. So, to close at 1, you'll debit inventory, credit, OCI exchange, gain or loss for 6,250. Okay? 
Yan. Therefore, ang cost ng goods natin is 525,000 plus 6,250. Or it's actually 531,250. Okay? So, on March, on April 1, di ba? So, you have actually sold 30% of the goods. Yung entry mo lang, assuming perpetual inventory records, called debit cost of goods sold square inventory for 159,375. Again, that's actually 531,250, the adjusted carrying amount of the inventory, times 30%. Okay? So, on June 1, you sold 70% or the remaining uh, goods, no? So, of course, you'll debit lang 531,250 times 70%. Na cost of goods sold, credit inventory for 371,875. Okay? So, all in all, di ba? Your cost of goods sold mo is... 531,250. Okay? Yung alternative 2 naman natin. Alternative 2. Okay? So, again, alternative 2. Uh, so, I've said kanina, uh, yung other comprehensive income gain or loss will be taken into profit or loss the moment uh, it affects the hedge uh, the hedge item affects profit or loss. Okay? Or, again, uh, the moment na mabenta na yung goods kasi that's the time uh, it will, the hedge item will affect profit or loss. Again, on, on March 1, ito yung entry, di ba? On, uh, sa pag-deliver ng goods or pag-purchase. That's inventory credit cash for 525000 Again, so, on April 1, we have, when the entity had sold 30% of the goods, of course, yung i-debit niya, na, initial i-debit niya na cost of goods sold is actually based on the 525,000, di ba? So, 525 times 30% is actually 157,500, no? And then, uh, you amortize, no? Or you reclassify 30% of the other comprehensive income gain or loss kasi nga, 30% um, din yung cost ng goods na nabenta or 30% uh, lang ng goods ang nabenta. So, 6 to 50 times 30%, you have uh, 1875 sold that because of goods sold, credit, other comrades of income, change gain or loss. Okay? Next would be uh, the entry on June 1 when the entity had sold the uh, remaining goods or 70% of the goods. No? So, your first record cost of goods sold credit inventory equal to 70% of the cost of the goods, which is 525,000. So, the big cost of goods sold credit inventory for 367,500. Okay? Yan. And then, um, i adjust mo na siya, no? Yung, uh, i adjust the cost of goods sold credit other comprehensive income. So, your remaining 70% then of your other comprehensive income. Okay? Yeah. That's actually 4375. So debit cost of goods sold, credit, OCI, change, gain, or loss per 4375. So you take note na whether you use alternative 1 and alternative 2, you have the same cost of goods sold. That's actually 531,250. So if you take into consideration the cost of goods sold for 157,500 plus 1875 plus 367,500 plus 4375, that's actually 531,250. Okay, the same with alternative 1. So, if you add 159,375 plus 371,875, that's still 531,250. But, yung timing lang, no? Sa pag-close ng other comprehensive, other comprehensive income, tayo na differ. Okay? Kasi on alternative 1, i-adjust mo siya sa initial carrying amount ng item. But, on alternative 2, Okay? Na, uh, uh, na close lang yung other comments of change gain or loss the moment uh, na benta na yung goods or it, it affects the profit or loss. Okay? Yan siya. Okay, so we still have another illustration. This time is actually a forecasted uh, uh, forecasted sale transaction. Okay? Okay, so on December 1, 2014, Jose Company expects to sell merchandise for 1500 in United you know, States on March 1, 2015. So the, buying, the, the transaction is probable, but there's no binding agreement for this sale and is to be denominated in dollars. Okay, so the transaction and settlement for the sale of merchandise is March 1, 2015. Also, on December 1, 2014, uh, to hedge this forecasted sale transaction, Jose Company entered into a third 
uh, forward contract to sell 1,500 on March 1, 2015 for 441.15 P90 day forward trade. Okay, so the company designates the, uh, the, the forward contract as a hedging instrument in a cash flow hedge of exposure to the increase in dollar rate. So we have here the uh, forward rates, no? Uh, and the spot rate, the forward rates for the for December 1, December 31, and of course, March 1, 2015. Okay, so let's start no? with our entry with the entry on March 1, okay, or on, on December 1, 2014. So, since a uh, forward contract to sell ito, so, fix yung ma-receive mo para mag yung payable, okay? So, your he ang hedge item natin is a payable, okay? So, you'll debit uh, peso receivable from exchange dealer, credit, uh, foreign currency payable to uh, exchange dealer amounting to 61725 no? That is actually the uh, forward rate on this, the 90-day forward rate on December 1, uh, 2014 okay so again uh fix yung ma receive mo pero mag vary yung payable mo your forward currency payable so again our hedge instrument is payable okay so on december 31 2015 no uh, no entry pala no on the hedge item kasi nga it's still a forecasted transaction Ayan, so, wala pang transaction. Okay, so on December 31, 2014, so we'll take into consideration the exchanges in the rates, particularly the forward rate. So, compare natin yung 90-day forward rate on December 1 versus 60-day forward rate since 60 days na naman yung remaining on, the, uh, uh, on December 31, no? Up to the settlement date. So, we have 41.15 less 41.4. So, 41.4 less 41.15 times 1.5 is actually 3.75. And you take note, um, it's payable, then ang increase. So, pag payable, then ang increase, that means loss. So, again, this is cash flow hedge. So, changes will be taken into other comprehensive income. So, debit, um, also exchange gain or loss. No? for 375 credit foreign currency payable to exchange dealer at 375 so walang entry no for the hedge item okay on march 1 2015 the settlement date delivery date settlement date so we'll take into consideration muna the changes in the rates so you have to compare 60 day forward rate no uh, yung nigamit natin sa December 31 and then yung spot rate natin at 41.2. So, we have 41.4 less 41.2 times 1,500. Okay, that's our exchange rate uh, on um, uh, spot rate on March 1, 2015 in the forward rate on 60 forward rate on December 31. Okay, so take note na Nag, nag decrease so pag nag decrease then we have payable so we have gain so yung entry mo is your debit foreign currency payable to exchange dealer and credit OCI exchange gain or loss amounting to 300 <clears throat> okay so see also the settlement data for forward contracts you'll debit your fixed receivable now, debit cash, credit best receivable for the fixed receivable, diba, at 61725 And of course, you'll close the foreign currency payable. This actually equal to the spot rate on March 1. You'll debit foreign currency payable to exchange dealer credit investment foreign currency for 61800 Okay, so the record the sale transaction. So, kasi, um, this, uh, the sale uh, the, the sale uh, took place on March 1. So, you'll debit investment in foreign currency credit sales for 61800 And that's actually equal to the spot. No? And then, um, we are to close the, the balance of the other comprehensive income to the sales account. Okay? And siya. So, yung balance ng other comprehensive income natin, diba? so we have... Um, credited 
Uh, we have debited 375 and then we have credited 300. So, yung balance natin, by 375 na debit, by 300 na credit. So, may balance na 75 na um, debit. So, to close that one to our sales account, so you'll debit sales credit um, OCI exchange gain or loss na 75. Therefore, yung adjusted sales natin, we have 61,800 less 75. We have 61,725. Ito yung sales natin. Okay? So, that ends our illustration for our discussion for a forecasted transaction. So, thank you.